Hi, welcome to TechEd in Barcelona. I'm here with Richard Mooney. You're heading the Augmented Analytics Division within SAP. And we're going to discuss more details about Augmented Analytics. And many people are talking about it, but I would like to understand how you would like to describe Augmented Analytics. Um, so I think the first observation that I would make is that the amount of data that people and businesses are collecting today has surpassed their ability to be able to really analyze it in ways that allow them to get meaningful insight out of it. And the core concept behind augmented analytics is looking at the entire analytics pro process from an end-to-end -end perspective and thinking about how can we use machine intelligence, how can we th rethink the way that we do intelligence, and how can we smart be smarter about the way that we work for da with data in order for us to allow them to really take advantage of the data that they're collecting and make better business decisions. But how does that work? Can you give some examples of that? So I think there's two major categories that we can help people with. The first category is that we can able, enable them to find insight an awful lot faster. We can do that by help, helping them to interact with the data in a more natural way through conversational AI. We can enable them to search for insight, but searching for the data that, uh, that is, exists at a core level, but also enabling them to search for insight about the data and helping take advantage of some of the type of things that we do in search, such as autocomplete, such as being able to show them what's available and effectively helping them to find the information that they want very naturally. We can also surface natural language in dashboards and reports to enable them to understand what the dashboards are telling them. We can alert them when there's changes in the data. We can use all types of smart techniques that effectively tell them what's happening as opposed to forcing them to really dig deep into the data themselves to find that insight themselves. And oftentimes when they do that, they misinterpret the data according to their own biases or, or what they want to believe. The second major category that we can help people with is helping them to extract information from the data. So we can uh, help them to understand not just what is happening, but why it's happening and why at a really deep level. So what are their customers, their suppliers, their employees doing that is causing the business to behave in the way that they're seeing in the business results. And from a BI and planning perspective, the key thing about that is that it enables them to have much more in-depth analysis faster, which is really mathematically correct. It enables them to understand if plans are likely to happen or uh, what's happening with a plan. Is it, it, are the results going to actually be the way that we expect them to be? And what should we do about it? What are the concrete actions that we should take in order to, to make that plan more efficient, in order to be more likely for it to be successful? But for me to understand it a little bit better, what's the, the, the real value? We have now data science teams, we have multidisciplinary teams with people from marketing, from sales, from operations, where you have analysts in the team. Um, we have the specialist each time in the team to do the analysis, uh, to do the reporting, to do the disco data discovery, uh, to de define the algorithms. What is now then different? Where is the value for the users? Is it the end user that can use it now or is it still the data scientist and the analyst? I, I think a huge amount of this is, is democratizing the type of work that a data scientist can do and opening it up to end users to allow us to be able to scale it to much greater levels of, of usage within an organization. Because when, when a data scientist does this type of analysis, it still takes a long time for them to do it. Oftentimes they're away from the actual operational systems where people work on a day-to-day -day basis, and it, there really is a lot of heavy lifting associated with it. Data scientists are still going to be required to do things like, like really, really in-depth analysis of business problems, but for day-to-day -day type of understanding, we should be able to empower business analysts with a lot of these capabilities without the requirement for data scientists. Yeah, and this is mainly in the domain of sales, marketing, um, HR, so the data that SAP has in their systems. A anywhere where there's structured data that exists within operational systems that we report on today, a lot of the value that we will eventually generate is effectively bridging the, the gap between the traditional data warehouse that business analysts work in 
into type of newer ideas like data warehouse cloud and effectively you know making data warehousing and analytics really machine learning literate and data literate in the way that we see today and to explain a little bit more for the watchers how ai and machine learning are applied for example to improving the workflows to improving bi can you explain how this works so if, if we could give a couple of examples like some of the type of business problems that we see an awful lot of interest in is like total workforce management how is um, how is uh, a company going to be able to understand why certain parts of its workforce attrits, why they leave, uh, what type of retention programs would they be able to pay, keep in place in order to keep them, um, are those retention programs more, more expensive or less expensive than letting people go um, if they want to leave, and what are the real reasons and drivers behind them leaving. So that's one example. In sales and marketing, you know, why do certain opportunities close and other opportunities don't close? Uh, what, what, what is the actual real reasons behind that? Which opportunities are likely to close? How much business am I likely to do by the end of the year? In, in type of finance, in the finance space, we see a lot of like travel and expense management. So what business units are likely to overspend on their travel budget? Are we going to overspend as a whole? Do we need to take corrective action early? Uh, can we see by business unit the deviations from plan um, and by region, can we see the deviations from plan? And ultimately, what is the things that are hidden in our data across all of those business units that, that make it like, um, that, that we can take advantage of to make better business decisions? Richard, thanks a lot for all your insights and we tried to explain it in thousand words, but I think what makes much, much easier is just to try it out. User experience you cannot really explain. You just have to do it. So I think for the users, just try out Augment Analytics. I really loved it. So back to the audience. Thank you for watching here from TechEd in Barcelona. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and get notifications of my new video.